go and do the other thing. Okay, just a second. Skip the what? Uh, skip the five minutes in. Skip the first ten minutes. The first eight minutes. Okay, I'll just skip the first five minutes and we'll see what he says. Let me just start off. I guess. Hey everyone and welcome back. Well, uh, this was looking like a really sleepy week with not much going on. But then Blizzard announced what they were going to do with WoW Classic, and then they talked about Azerite. So, you know, both two chilled out topics. Plus, we also have some other fun things. As an example, Zalatath's pretty much back. Now, if you've been around for when I am um, from when I first talked about Zalatath in RuneScape, I doubt Classic WoW is going to be bigger than WoW because um Classic WoW okay, here is we go. philosophy in a different design. That would be super interesting. What if you take Classic WoW and you slowly iterate, you know, after all of the existing roster of content is done, what if you then start to add more content? Maybe they would just hop into TBC and then um, keep on going from there. Or maybe they would just take WoW off on a different fork. And you know what? If it's successful enough, something like that could work. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it's going to be, well, say an example like where old school RuneScape is bigger than main RuneScape. I doubt Classic WoW is going to be bigger than WoW because um, Classic WoW is not a sandbox in the way that old school RuneScape was, which means that it is a lot more infinitely replayable, I would say. But I haven't it's played old school RuneScape, so I don't even know if that's how true. Deal with this. I'd almost say that it's it, there's all it's almost completely certain it will be a success. It's really just a matter of if they are able to capture that lightning in a bottle, what do they do with it? And really, if I was to capture, I think the one thing that has people excited about World of Warcraft, I'm going to use an analogy. Uh, well, I'm going to use an example from a book, which is Principles by Ray Dalio. And a lot of his point is that the things that matter are meaningful work and meaningful relationships. Oh, and oh. when you look into classic this WoW, is big. really those two things are kind of pillars. Yes. Meaningful uh, relationships in that the sense is what of community matters. Forms, and meaningful work in the sense of the rewards being meaningful but slow paced. And I think those things come together in a way that um, is quite different to the modern game. And I think that yes. is what players are really excited about. And uh, yeah, hey, if that ends up being a different uh, dev fork of WoW, well, damn, sign me up. It would certainly be um, an interesting landscape to find ourselves in. The Next up, I just want to mention Zalatath and the lore because something really exciting has been data mined. There's a new version of Zalatath for patch 8.1. Now, I'm not going to spoilers oh, here, but oh, suffice this, to yeah, say, yeah, this is the quest it item. It seems like this is going to just go in really, really interesting places. Um, now, then, when you look at what I talked about last week with death and some of the more recently data mined um, death stuff, and then, of course, just the main plot line. Well, you know, the story of Warcraft is getting more and more interesting than ever. I just kind of wanted to make this point. So, you know, it's really interesting because, like, it, okay. it's no secret that I am falling out Wait, of where love the fuck with some is of that? the game systems. What but the, the fuck? opposite is Where's happening with elements of the world and the story, and it's kind of crazy. Like, is recently, that in I spent five hours going through the works of H.P. Lovecraft, comparing them with various quotes, drawing parallels. I don't remember that at all. And that was just for the fun of it. So I suppose I'm bringing all of this up because I'm finding it interesting how you know, WoW is developing and how my interests are changing. And like going back to Zalatath, she's just another really cool thing to throw into the puzzle box of what they're doing. She's a wild card. It's like she Rathion. can change so much of what we know about Nazoth and the Void, especially because of the power of Sargaris' corruption. And that's just really cool and exciting. And when you go through 8-1, even though I see all these systems and my initial thought is, yeah, that's all cool. I'll do them a few times, but I don't really care because it's not foundational. There's all this lore that I'm then kind of excited about. So it's kind of odd, I suppose. In many ways, WoW for me is like this thing that I'm continuing to be super interested in the world. And then as for the content, well, you know, maybe I'm doing 2v2s, like, you know, learning how to fist weave, which is what I'm doing now. But other than that, maybe it is just the thing where I kind of hop in intensely for like, you know, um, a month or two at a time. And just in the in-between periods, kind of just go into low power mode and, you know, chill out and do what I want, but don't really um, get too, um, you know, too fussed about it. So I guess it's just interesting how WoW is developing and how like the broader I'll skip interest ahead in World of Warcraft is kind of the thing that's really carrying a lot of it for me now. Okay, next up, it is time for the the big topic. Um, you know, we just finished topics that are really exciting and pretty positive. Now we're diving headfirst into the murky waters because it is time to talk about Azerite gear. Now, I've just reread what I actually wrote for this. Um, Everybody this hates and, this uh, shit, dude. Like, I've got to say straight up. Everybody really hates Azerite gear. It's so fucking funny, man. Here. Uh, just know I don't know why. It's just hilarious. Of how they sound. I love their right. game, and it is my genuine intention to help them 
uh, yeah. learn and gain perspective on how they are being perceived. I've been in this game uh, long enough to know that being a constant yeah. source of outrage Everybody might, hates it. Uh, you know, while it does lead to a short-term spike in views, long-term, terrible game plan, terrible idea. It's not a foundation to build anything on. Really? So, no, I, I did take great. This and... And, you know, if you're Complaining watching my channel constantly? To, um, look at me, I'm hobby, doing great. I understand that this Come could on. be a downer. So, um, look, I don't anticipate talking about this stuff too much more. And as I look ahead on the channel, there's a lot of game guides, lore discussion and things like that. But, okay, look, let's just go. Blizzard posted a response that I really think has done them so much more harm than good. And from reading the fallout, people seem to agree with that. Yes. They did not engage with the substance of people's beliefs. They came off as looking down the, you know, down their noses at players. They showed a level yes. of disconnect that was worrying. There is often talk of them being in a bit of a bubble over there and not getting things. Yes. And I think that means that sometimes they're genuinely, they just get surprised by things all the time. When to us in the community, well, it just seems completely obvious. That's because they're not I part of the community. I suppose if I was to say one thing with, with Blizzard, they're not part this. of the community. You know, no plan survives contact with the enemy. Blizzard try to make these really rigid systems that tightly direct oh. and manage the player experience. Okay. Uh, yes. You can't sit down, work out a grand perfect system um, that manages individuals and what they will do, implement it, and then expect it to work. It never works. And frankly, what it does end up doing, you know, when it, when it works, you just have mobile games which are unethical manipulation of human psychology. It's not good. And when I say, you know, your I plan like doesn't survive contact with the enemy. Sometimes yeah. it begins to feel like players are That's the enemy. That's fucking right. And mm, it just doesn't feel good. Wait but a second. With that, I think we need to get into the post. What so did he I want to. I want to replay this real quick. Listen to what he just said. Good. And when I say, you know, your plan doesn't survive contact with the enemy. Sometimes it begins to feel like players are the enemy. And you hear that? the enemy sometimes it begins to feel like players are the enemy and there it is mm, it just right doesn't there. feel good but with that i think we need to get into the post so blizzard were responding to a large thread that did a fantastic job of summarizing common complaints with azerite now it did have a bit of a hyperbolic title let's be real i can't say anything about that uh, but okay first i think that lore really poisoned the well with um, a comment that felt very nasty and dismissive, so I'm really going to take him to task on it. He said, seriously, I can't be the only one who remembers um, farming level 30 dungeons for AQ-40 resistance gear. Look, that's just not at all honest. As Preach covered in his recent video, that was a niche case that impacted a tiny number of people and also was a small aspect of a single raid's progression. Yeah, it was silly. But to say that that's even in the same ballpark as an expansion-wide system that impacts the entire player base is absurd. Opening in this manner makes you look defensive. It makes you look petty. It makes you look it is, emotionally you shouldn't reactive. Have with that ball. It is so it's clearly mistake. silly that the fact you're attempting to bring it up in this manner makes it look like you are looking down on us. Now look, I He's really going don't think in. that's the case, but I'm saying this because that's how people react. He's going in. And I think that that reaction was genuinely surprising to Blizzard. Oh shit. Look, while movies may tell you that pithy quips are a good idea, they're not helpful when adults have to come together to talk about substantive issues. They dilute the conversation, they oh, sidetrack shit. us, and in cases like this, they hurt your own mission. Okay, so oh. after that bizarre comment, they went on to say that trait targeting isn't really the problem. Oh. And that the main problem is that traits He's are not really balanced. Respect and that, game, that is the dude. reason why people, um, you know, they, they don't like not being able to target things. No, I'm, I'm afraid not. People actually do like being able to target things regardless of numbers. It's almost as of if course. setting a goal for yourself and then working towards that goal is an important part of playing the game. What? And uh, what? to go and earn, say, a specific I thought I was playing a slot loot, machine. That is at the heart of the fantasy that this game what used to be trying to realize. Next, we saw Blizzard say that the OP's claim that traits are useless and uninteresting is at odds with them saying that every gear change requires simming, saying that if the latter was the goal, then it would be best to make the traits all be very simple. Well, this is a very simplistic read of the situation as it's conflating separate criticisms in a nonsensical way in order to discredit both of them. Being frustrated over having to sim all the time Ooh. is because it's often not clear if a trait is better because Ooh. the traits themselves are very uninspired and boring. They're just random free damage. Well, if a That's trait really was fun. Like, what do you, mean? Um, you know, good and clearly good, say that an was AOE, fun. like as an example, Fist of Fury lasts a second longer, then you wouldn't have to sim uh, in order to know you go for that in an AOE uninspired fight. Uninspired random damage, now, it's great. 
is an example of a trait that is more interesting and doesn't require simming. So Blizzard, it's not hard, and what you did is just a prime example of not engaging with the substance of people's criticisms. Things like this are exactly the communication sort of blunders that you get memed on. Now that said, well, look, if you're in the position of personally knowing that this system is just a wash, um, but you know you're, you're sort of, you've got to stick with it for an expansion, can you really say something real as a company rep just a month into the X-Pack? Probably not, and this leads us to the next point where Blizzard agreed that having to refarm traits doesn't feel good. No, but it's like it just a downside of the system that we'll have to accept for the expansion. The so system there that you they go. made. A fundamental flaw with Azerite that fa feels majorly bad, and yeah, probably they part fixed of the that with artifact for power with life. concordance. They next talked about how the balancing of what do you mean? the they last can't fix it. few weeks was going on, that it's been successful enough in making the Azerite stuff just a bit more consistent in terms of the trait power, which is probably a good thing. But their next point does tick me off a lot, though. Ooh, the reforging costs are so high because they don't want it to be sustainable for you to constantly modify your gear. This Instead, they too. want you to earn multiple sets. So that's maybe on a low end, three sets per spec for three specs. So nine bits of loot. That's a tremendous amount to keep up with Nine in terms of getting hats. the item levels for all of them, <laughs> and you know, for every single set, and it's a massive annoyance in terms of bag space. Yes. Now, Laura said that they would likely get more restrictive on reforging in the future, not less. Thank you, boys. So they really are locked into this. The plan is for you, you to have bags full of Azerite gear and for Azerite progression just to be locked in. Thank you, You know Blizzard. what? This just seems evil to me. Really <sighs> evil. It's just a thing to get you to farm Fucking more. Fucking evil. To just have more things to That's keep up That's great. I love it. It's entirely contrived and not customer friendly feeling. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It feels wicked. Not customer nasty, friendly. Nasty, laced with venom. Doubly so because of how tremendously expensive the reforging is. Sure, it's 5G the first time, but it doubles every time. 10 reforges later, 2.5k. 15 reforges, 81k. Now, it halves every three days, but, you know, good luck if you're trying to dabble into other specs. Artifacts, legendaries, and sets did not have this big, disgusting anti-player problem. Look, Blizzard, I get that uh, you basically just want to make it so the players did. have another 9 to 15 bits of gear they need to keep updated, even though it's only three slots because you want a longer-lasting loot system, but the way that you did it feels horrible. Um, I mean, it feels like space aliens came in and thought it up, and... You know, it's not like we got to Just test any of this much anyway. BFA didn't have access to max level pre-made characters, which is much of the, you know, reason why the 120 experience is so rough. And look, if you can't design this they system right, it. and the only way for it to work is as badly thought out as this, don't punish players for your system. Design a better system. This feels well, at worst a bit evil and at best just misguided, ill-conceived, and a bit incompetent. Now, Lore did later on go on to say that they are considering upping the drops from Mythic Plus, but that they're not exactly sure how yet, and that 8.1 will have um, new gear with new traits, which could solve some of our current problems. Um, though that it said, how, you know, will that update like the Mythic Plus gear that comes from the dungeon pool? Because that's already here now. It's hard to know. So overall, they admitted that the Azerite system has some really deep flaws. They showed their hand in regards to the intent of the reforging costs and you needing to maintain a silly amount of gear. Of course, you know, with no decent way to get that gear. Um, they dodge complaints that the community has. And yeah, this backfired, didn't it? Look, more communication is good and it's needed. But by being more communicative, they are beginning to show how out of touch they are. Personally, I think the Battle for Azeroth needs a major patch that, in the style of Destiny 2 or No Man's Sky, aims to massively improve core systems. I think that the Nazjatar raid should entirely remove Azerite gear from the game. Instead, it should move that all, um, all the traits onto the neck piece. Traits could be unlocked by doing various bits of content, just like the Azerite gear. You would then have a pool. Who of is this guy? Traits. Just you know, you're able to pick between three of them. Say just like how talents work. Have you know one like tree for each of your specs. Really simple system. Job done. Oh, guess what? That's basically like glyphs that they added in Wrath of the Lich King. Perhaps oh! then, you know, put sets back and we could be in a really good place with loot. Um, it would the same place that we were at. In the Azerite gear progression, but look, I don't it think worked. Azerite gear is uh, keeping people locking into the game. I think someone at it's Blizzard needs to take ownership of this fiasco. They need to have the public bravery to admit that, like, they were wrong with this we system. We fucked up! And perhaps announce an overhaul similar to what I described. Like, Blizzard, if you can pull that off, you'll do a lot of good for the long-term health of BFA. And you'll also look really good in the process, like you've been listening. Yes. Look, just please, don't sunk cost fallacy yourselves into this one. Okay, well, that was fun. That's I mean, maybe true. I've had a few lem sips too many, but I, I you know, I, I kind of did just, you know, snort up and go at them with a, sn a scalpel. 
Um, but look, I'm happy to take a hit, even if it means that, um, you know, just in the goal of getting these ideas out there and trying to explain the source of the frustrations that are hurting the game. I think the Blizzard, honestly, they need help understanding with how players are engaging their game. And yes, whether, they don't understand. Uh, you know, they, they want it or not. It's a decently large megaphone that I can point in their face and say, hey, guys, Listen this is a lot of the problems shit. people have with your game. I really don't think you understand them. Because, unfortunately, most of the time the Blizzard opens their mouth in regards to things like Azerite, they show they don't get it. They show they're not really getting the core of the problem. Like they're kind of getting some of the surface level stuff, and that's shown in their talk about balancing. But when you go deeper to the things that really matter, the things yes. that drive yes. the game, the beating the systems, heart of World of Warcraft, the core. and how they've been changing that... I think they either don't get it or they're not willing to admit that they're wrong in some regards. It's fundamentally what I would say is, up. look at Destiny 2. People started to embrace them again once they decided to fix their game a bit. Look at No Man's Sky. Tremendously disastrous launch, but they worked in their yeah. game. They did a big free patch and the internet loved them. Final because Fantasy they put 14 the work in, did the same uh, thing, But they I were think. also realistic and, you know, acknowledging that things weren't good at the start. I think Blizzard really needs to do something like that. They can't just ignore the problem and let it fester. I was doing YouTube throughout Warlords of Draenor, and I didn't always conduct myself that well during that period of time. But the one thing about Warlords of Draenor that kind of hurt is that for a lot of it, they were kind of silent on things. They kind of pretended a lot of problems didn't exist, and that really hurt them with the community. I think they just need to take a different approach, and hopefully someone at Blizzard who's sort of seen what I'm getting at there and maybe feel some of my exasperation because I, I, I just, whenever they talk, I, I just feel myself face palming uh, because they just don't get it. It's kind of crazy. So yeah, there you it go. Really That's is. what's up with the Azerite gear. Thankfully though, much like with how, well, you know, say with Legion, I just decided I didn't care about legendaries and they weren't much of an issue for me in the game. Yeah, but um, you didn't raid. I just don't care about Azerite stuff. Um, that's okay. I have the option to do that because I'm just doing See, casual 2 raid, you have to. which is a project that's been going uh, great. And the next step of that for me is learning fist weaving. So I'm probably going to head over to Peaks of Serenity soon. Um, See, we had been doing uh, Holy and... Uh, Holy and Windwalker, which was pretty good. And there were some really fun times, like this one time where a rogue ran away, but, and like I was- That's what they do every whatever, time. But one of my storm earth and fires followed the rogue and killed him, which was really funny. Fuck rogues. Um, but I've been loving the, the PVP side of the game because it's just, it's so evergreen, right? It's like every time yes. you go in, it feels different. And that's been, that's honestly <coughs> that and the lore of the game. They're the two things that have really been just keeping me sort of tied to World of Warcraft and engaged and passionate um, yes. about playing it. But, you know, if I say watch Preach's videos and I get the perspective of a mythic raider or, you know, some of the people in my ga uh, game dev team and um, their friends who are um, sort of heroic to, you know, dabbling in mythic raiders, you know, from, from them, all the sounds that I hear are like, we love the bosses of World of Warcraft. We love the experience of going into a raid but all these things surrounding it we don't like and it's not fun and, you know i was just at egx um you know for our, for our game and um you know, because i tweeted out that i was there i'd say like every 20 minutes i you know someone would come up to me and talk about the channel and the game and what was great about egx is i was you know able to spend a few minutes with everyone and you know assuming they didn't have to run off or whatever and almost everyone was actually literally everyone over four days of being at egx um who I, you know who's talking about that didn't and that was most of them they were not in a good place with the game and i think they were mostly raiders so that kind of yep. makes sense um so it's kind of weird i suppose you know if i think purely about my own experience um i'm having a really good time because i'm not really feeling the downsides of all these but when i try to put myself in the shoes of all the people who i talk that's kind of how i feel um, too and you know listen to their opinions and what they're saying and um, and think back to when I was really into raiding, especially like my favorite raid tier ever is Throne of Thunder. Uh, like Ooh. Lei Shen, just best fight ever. Um, Pretty maybe close. Maybe it's been a better one since, but I, that fight's got a special place for me. But when I talk to all these people, you know, I, I just get concerned, right? And I really, really want World of Warcraft to do well and be sustainable Same. into the future. And it just, it gets really sad. <laughs> it gets really sad. And um, this element of... of you know, what I do for a living and love doing, just having this big downer being attached to it. And I mean, yeah, like I've got to be real with you about it, right? I can't, you know, 
there's no way to polish it to make it all better. Um, now that said, you know, as I alluded to um, earlier on, there's lots of lore coming up. I've got like four lore videos planned out and that's something I'm really passionate about. And that's a fun, positive sure. topic that's just a good, like a big positive for everyone. So I'm really happy about that. And when 8.1 comes out, there'll be guides to do. I'll be back to my bread and butter. That will all be good. Hopefully 8.1 is going to bring a new bunch of traits that are really good. And hopefully we'll start to see some, you know, things be tweaked or changed or whatever. But look, that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with Azerite. And I just felt like that uh, that post with Blizzard really, that really did deserve, uh, you know, deserve the full run, a full try because it was just kind of indicative of a lot of things that have been frustrating it sure uh, is. with them recently. And it's probably it um, sure led to this being is. a stupidly long uh, news video. So, look, thank you very much for watching. I totally get how the probably the back 60% of this was not something you were into listening to and just came off as, you know, moaning, complaining bullshit or whatever. What are you talking about, um, dude? This is what we need to hear. Because, I mean, yeah, I don't, like, exactly, you know, record one of these and end thinking, ah, great, what a, what a brilliant day. I really owned them. <laughs> That's not fun, right? No one finds that fun. Um, yeah, we do. I don't know. Look, just let me know what you think down yeah, we in do. the, we in love the it. description or the it's comment great. side. I'd love to hear what you've got to say about Azerite, about the communication, um, about that post. And also, if you want more discussion in that, um, Preach released a 30 minute video. And then previous to that, he's had two videos, which, um, you know, cover all that pretty well. So, um, yeah, you, you can do that. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching and bearing with me. Um, a lot of cool stuff coming on the channel uh, pretty soon, and I will see you next time. Okay. Number one. That guy needs to be your next Allcraft guest. Number two. I'm, I'm ecstatic that he finally... He Look, said it. He he found he found his he found his balls and he took them and he he looked at Blizzard and he goes, "Hey, right here, suck these right here." He nailed it, dude. I'm so glad to see these creators just hammering Blizzard. All these people coming out of the woodwork, you know, all the except for you know, couple uh, a couple making some videos, uh, you know, obviously like to. Oh, blizzard a little bit too much but hey you know that's that's what it is but i'm so glad that finally people are are speaking out you know what i mean it's good i like it he gained a lot of respect for me for that he's always been like this like I've, I've i've done like two or three videos with Bellior before like nah, I, nah, nah, nah. no when i watch been. his videos nah dude well he just doesn't focus he's not like the same way that we are but what i mean is like he's actually like he's he has that mindset it's like at the end of the day, like, this guy, like, he is on the same page that we are, right? He feels the same way that we do. Even though he's not, like, a super, like, high-end Mythic Raider or anything like that, he still knows what the fuck is going on, right? He still sees what what's what this is. Yeah, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and link this video. Everybody go ahead and, and go give this video a like, okay? Go give it a like. It's only got 3,000 likes right now. Go give it a fucking like. And I, I completely fucking agree with what he's saying. I do. And th what he was really saying, and why I think the main thing that's interesting about what he was saying here, is that Blizzard talking is actually revealing how out of touch they are. Mm -hmm. And whenever they start talking about these things, like Azerite Gear and what their philosophy is, people just keep getting more and more angry because they're realizing that these different features are even more player unfriendly than they originally thought and also they could chalk it up to just blizzard being incompetent but whenever blizzard literally just fucking sits there and it says no we want to make the reforging cost be even more because we want you to wear you know have eight different helmets in your bag for every single different situation and if you actually do that you're just obsessively simming so what's the point you know like they they're just so fundamentally out of touch it's absolutely terrible and i don't even know what to do Right, I legitimately don't even know what to do except for just make more of it, more of these videos. Um, I, I I don't get it, man. I legitimately do not fucking get it. Reddit post. Um, let's do Antorus, and then we'll do the Reddit post after that. Does that sound good? I, I think yeah, that's, that's what fine. makes sense. Yeah, yeah.